okay, so welcome to Bell Talks. It's um, part of Bell Talks where we talk, obviously, with the filmmakers. So it's Bell Talks. Um, and um, yes. <laughs> yeah, I got it. <laughs> Thanks for explanation. <laughs> Um, congratulations for the premiere at Forum. Um, I was there. I, I, I loved it from the beginning. So <laughs> Yeah, it was the last time actually I screened it uh, because then everything uh, was shut down because of yeah. uh, COVID. So <laughs> Yeah, now we're going to, we decided to put Frame at the opening of the Museum of Modern Art, of the, the Meteors program. It's not going to be it, I mean, it's going to be in front of the audience, so it's going to be like screening. Well, they screened it at several festivals, but I wasn't there, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, um, this uh, direct feedback, which is maybe a pity from the audience. Yeah, I have so many questions because this is such a unique experience to watch this. And but maybe you will help me with, 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 with the answers also. Maybe not. <laughs> I, I, I'm really, no, I'm really puzzled. Um, how did you make this film? So first of all, I mean, in terms of production issues. <laughs> yeah, how, how it even happened? It was yeah, because, I mean, it's so it's entirely filmed on Antarctica, right? Except yeah. for the prologue, which is the first five minutes, six minutes, and that's like, I mean, one of my dreams. But you know, when when I was Thinking about it, I mean, I'm sh almost sure that I will never go there in my life, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, how, how did that well, happen? It's, it's not that complicated. Uh, yeah. Because you can, um, at the place uh, we were, it, it's like um, South Shetlands. It's called South Shetland Islands. Mm -hmm. And it's like 100 kilometers from um, the Antarctic uh, continent. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are ships with tourists that actually come there. Uh, but I don't know how much it costs, but uh, mm. I mean, it's possible to get at this uh, exact place. Uh, it's much more complicated to go to Antarctic continent, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so these islands are like reachable by ship and there is even an, an airport um, mm. uh, and you can take a plane from Punta Arenas, like not as a regular person, but uh, they transport scientists and uh, material and, and stuff like that with this, um, uh, it's like <laughs> this huge plane, Hercules it's called, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like a passenger pa plane, but... Like a um, cargo, cargo plane for the... A cargo plane, yeah. But, but yeah. it's and also military personnel because some bases are like military bases. But actually it's, yeah, it, it takes like three hours from Punta Arenas, if I remember it well. Uh, with plane, but we came there uh, with the ship. Mm. It was like a Russian uh, cargo ship, uh, which took uh, material and food and whatever they needed. At, uh, and some people also uh, to, this, to, um, to different stations, because there are several stations uh, in this, uh, it's King's George Island, it's called. And one of these stations is a Polish Antarctic, Polish Antarctic station, Arstowski. And we had an agreement with, um, with Polish people. It belongs to Polish uh, Institute of Science or Biochemistry or something like that. Mm. And so um, it was quite a long process to, <laughs> to uh, get an agreement, but finally we were successful. And they they agreed to accommodate us for uh, I don't know it was like maybe six weeks we stayed at at the place mm -hmm. because obviously we can't just uh, we we couldn't choose the date and uh, not even of arrival and of the of leaving due to the conditions the weather conditions and and a lot of a lot of things so we just had to accept. Uh, 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 when the ship was leaving from uh, Poland, and uh, but we went by plane to, uh, no, to Buenos Aires um, because it would be a long journey, you know, <laughs> from Poland, obviously, <laughs> through through all the world. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so uh, 
<laughs> so we embarked on the ship uh, in Mar del Plata, which is like a port near Buenos Aires. And, and then it took like maybe 10 days, if I remember it well, wow. uh, to reach the islands. And uh, yeah. And so you, you had already written all the concept about the drone? <laughs> yeah, I, I had written all the concepts like hundreds of times <laughs> and uh, now it was much more complicated than it looks actually. Uh, it looks like a very simple and pure film in, in a way, like the final outcome, but it, it was meant to be more complicated with more uh, like different parts and then the residue of this is the introduction. Uh, which you mentioned, which is now like just a few minutes, but it was meant to be like a whole episode that was shot in New Zealand mm -hmm. uh, on 16 millimeter. And, it, and actually this was the part that, <laughs> that was talking about this topic of artificial intelligence. Uh, there was like a researcher or software engineer, I don't know, who was uh, working um, on some sort of uh, artificial neural network and uh, and he wanted to test it in like a natural environment and see what it does, uh, like some sort of autonomous uh, artificial intelligence. And there was another part which was, <laughs> which was meant to, uh, to be shot in China. It was about uh, <laughs> uh, genetical engineering and uh, stuff like this. But, uh, uh, but then like a lot of times it happens when, when you have a lot of ideas that you want to put into one film, especially when it is like your uh, first feature film or whatever. And, and then um, in the development process, you, you realize that it's not possible and, uh, um, and you and have to- not, not necessary or, or you think, it, I mean, it, not possible or not necessary for the for the yeah, and it also when you start to shooting and you realize that it's, uh, some things need like more more space or yeah. because of the tempo rhythms and everything and and that actually this this part that was meant to be in Antarctica was about something else. But when I when I chose to uh, to reduce uh, all the topics to this uh, artificial intelligence uh, thing, um, I thought it would be interesting to actually shoot it in Antarctica, to test it there, like the, <laughs> the entity uh, of mm. this uh, researcher. And so we merged these two, um, I mean, these two episodes in, into one actually. And, mm. uh, and a lot of, and um, <laughs> when we went there, there was still in the script, this line, like a separate line of this researcher who, who is like uh, with this entity in Antarctica, testing it because I wasn't sure <laughs> uh, if I would be able to, I had this idea that I, uh, I would prefer to make the whole film to like the eyes or like subjective point of view of this entity, but mm -hmm. I wasn't sure I, I would manage to, um, to create uh, this character uh, with all, <laughs> you know, to be, uh, how to say, so, so sophisticated or I don't know that, that you would believe or, or I don't know that you would be able to project yourself into, you know, uh, something that is not human or to look through its eyes mm -hmm. that I would be able to do it so that it looks alive, you know, mm -hmm. and um, so it's, a, it's an alien or it's a robot? Or, <laughs> or it's, I don't know. It, it, uh, from, uh, in the script, it was like it's, it's some sort of artificial neural network that mm -hmm. uh, lives like in this uh, digital virtual world, whatever. And, uh, and it, it decides uh, one day to explore like the natural landscape and the biological life and, and what it even takes. Um, and so it... it uh, it uses some sort of a body as, as like some prosthetics or I don't know, and it's uh, drawn. Mm -hmm. And so it, it sort of uses this, uh, and this uh, physical mm -hmm. piece of uh, machinery, machinery uh, to explore like the natural landscape. And, uh, but I don't know if uh, everyone <laughs> um, is going to read it this way don't impose it, you know. There are some indices in, in the prologue that it, it was meant like this, but I understand that it's such an open structure and uh, that maybe some people will read it differently, but I don't mind. <laughs> and the sound that, that, that it's making, is, is, 
is it supposed to be some kind of uh, language that we don't understand? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that was that was the intention, but I'm not sure. Um, it it was also meant to be much more sophisticated, uh, but it was so hard <laughs> in the post production to uh, work with the sound and to. Um, it was like uh, three people involved, uh, except me, like uh, two sound designers and and one this uh, guy who was mixing it together. Um, and so it was quite difficult to understand each other when you talk about such abstract things uh, to find appropriate way how to show uh, or how to i don't know that it it has like uh, several layers uh, the sound actually uh, the first one is what we called <laughs> bios and it was like an an idea an idea how to Mm, create some sort of uh, feeling uh, with the sound that you are like inside the head or in the body of this thing mm -hmm. and that it, it is alive you know so we were we were looking for something mm, and uh, so it, it is this breathing finally mm -hmm. it was much more mechanical in, in the beginning it was more like a vacuum clear cleaner or something like that but then <laughs> but then we, as we progressed we were we were trying to because i didn't want it to be like really technical you know I wanted it to be something in between because actually the entity is inspired by the biological life or that's why she wants to explore it. So it impersonates somehow these biological attributes, you know. So, and uh, it finds out that this breathing thing or, or maybe it's like hard or something is like something that makes uh, life a lot of these biological beings. Mm. So uh, that was like one layer. And then there, then was, um, then there is this, this little thing that we call the whistle, <laughs> which is like, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it, it was made from uh, um, a collocation of bats. It's like trrr, trrr, something, yeah, yeah. you know, that, that 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 is all the time in there, and and we meant it like it would be some sort of a inner comment or something for, for, for this thing when it when it is interesting in something or, or wants to change direction or no, just like show something that's 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 interesting for, for it or, or no? Yeah, yeah. But it, it 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 was meant to have like a more layers, you know, but we didn't elaborate it uh, so well, I think, um at the end because of the time and and I don't know what because um it was meant to be some sort of a language exactly, you know. Uh when it's trying to communicate mm. with, with the outside world or whatever, but uh, sort of emotions uh, or some sort of alphabet or I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, it, uh, but it, it uh, stayed in this rudimentary like way. Um, yeah, but it was meant to be something. And then, then there is this third layer, which is like, uh, like absorbing uh, sounds from the environment to to make this impression that this thing is somehow collecting information about about the environment when, when it's moving but i didn't want it to be um uh, i didn't want a drone to like capture like the whole atmosphere like if you have a, a microphone in, uh, on the camera yeah. I, I wanted uh, to make um this impression that it really chooses like what what, yeah. what it's interested yeah. in so these tiny little sounds of ice cracking or water or wind or i don't know what and and it is sampling it or using some kind of a um, algorithm which is a uh, it's called granular synthesis <laughs> what what we used uh, it's it's used also in like speech recognition uh, algorithms and i don't know it's basically that you decompose the sound into micro elements and uh, then we work with this texture and uh, reorganize reorganize it and somehow we just wanted to make this feeling that it's somehow working with it creatively or it's trying to understand what, what, what it hears or, or what it is some kind of mental processing then it was uh, this all mixing thing which uh, mm, which is a, a pity when you when you uh, watch it on a screen uh, like uh, on a laptop or something with a stereo sound because the sound is like um, 5.1 dolby uh, surround mm -hmm. yeah. and it makes sense it, it's not like just uh, because we wanted with this uh, sound architecture like the sound space to create this feeling that you're inside the head so it captures the sound uh, from the environment in the front and then it takes it 
uh, like in the middle. It analyzes it with the algorithms and it and makes and in the back it it uh, like plays it back to itself in some other version, you know. So it's somehow um, uh, quite sophisticated the the work with the sound um, because it was um, we had few options to make this impression that this thing is alive. Uh, and basically in, in cinema you can you have picture and you have sound so mm -hmm. and, and the picture was quite limited because uh, it was the, the camera on the drone it was very uh, cheap simple drone uh, like uh, with a built-in camera so it has some sort of image and I couldn't influence it and um, uh, the, the thing we we used to make um, also this impression that is doing something also in the visual field was with the animations and these uh, 2D animations, these uh, data moshing and glitches uh, sort of things. And uh, yeah, and so the other way how to make it alive was sound architecture or sound design. Yeah, and, and one, just one technical question. When, when it does like three, 360 circles, <laughs> I was, where were you, where were you and the crew at that moment? Because in some moments, I thought I, I just, you know, it just. Yeah, well, <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we tried to. Well, you, you can, you have a, you know, like a remote control, so you can hide yourself. Yeah. It's so like it's it, it's really powerful remote, so you you could be on 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 the other side of the no no because you know when, when it was doing this like how do you say pan of the whole area mm -hmm. just totally empty so i was just guessing in terms of you know te <laughs> technical a lot of times we we hide it somewhere and uh, mm -hmm. uh, but when it wasn't possible there were a few shots when uh, maybe that's what you mean but it's really just like few shots we we used um, uh, uh, corrections Mm. You know, in, in the image that we deleted uh, figures <laughs> mm. in, in the image and uh, yeah, like in the post-production. And, and this, um, this um, uh, how do you say, circle, uh, flash, uh, when the dinosaurs appear, what's the good, what's the <laughs> like, um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, <laughs> like a hole in time space or, or something. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it was it was meant to be. So it's like uh, it, 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 does it say like that this entity is uh, was was living back there? It's a memory of, of it, so it's like an immortal entity, or is it just a flashback through time of that of that particular area? Well, it's also uh, I like when people uh, come with their own explanations, and I, that's why I don't like when. Um, no, yeah, but what, what was on your mind? Yeah, yeah when, when you have to say about the film before, like all this information. Um, but yeah, in, in the script, it was, it was meant like... Um, it also had like, for me, a few uh, explanations, you know. <laughs> One of them was this, uh, like, capability of this entity to maybe see uh, some mm -hmm. parallel universes or something that, that we can't, but maybe it can, you know. Mm -hmm. So the question is whether it's like this... Uh, Mm. It's it's like this past, you know, with with the dinosaurs that the chicken see this past layer, mm. that is but uh, always there, you know, even even now, just we can't see it. Yeah. Uh, because there is some other texture, you know. Now now there is snow, but you know, in, in, in the in, in the snow in a way or no? I mean, if I understand it correctly, it's just like layers of time. Yeah, 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 sort of, because, uh, and even in past, in Antarctica, there really was this uh, subtropic uh, landscape, you know, and then maybe there were dinosaurs, uh, and so it's it just seeing this, and, um, yeah, and, and uh, but it's, it's also like, um, yeah, you can interpret it as, as some sort of a memory, or, I don't know, like, that it's playing, uh, um, different uh, possibilities of of, uh, of current time you know and yes and and, and what about the the, the, the only human <laughs> that was the researcher actually <laughs> the the line with this because uh, yeah when I was uh, in the beginning when I was trying to explain 
um, we <laughs> we showed uh, the whole uh, line, uh, like a, it was like a narrative line with with this uh, person, and uh, uh, and I decided yeah. in the post production that we would actually lead away and and just leave it with the with 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 the subjective point of view of the entity. So we showed a lot of things with this <laughs> with this guy, and. <laughs> Who is, who is he in the real life and who is he in the film? Can you tell us that? <laughs> in the real life, it's just my friend. <laughs> uh, I don't know, a person that uh, we were three of us. Uh, like the crew was three people. So it was very small. Me, the camera operator or the drone operator and this person who <laughs> was uh, meant to be an actor, sort of. But there wasn't like a real acting, you know. It was more... Um, he was... Uh, like doing some sort of a diary at, at place where, where he was explaining his thoughts about what he was doing and about the expectations and stuff like that, you know. But then it didn't work in the in the editing in these two parallel lines, so I just uh, threw it away. Mm -hmm. And he, he stayed there and I thought, I don't know, I, I, I actually like this, um, that there is like an, evol I don't know how to say it, like an evolutionary narrative, sort of, yeah, in, in yeah. the film. Gradually, so, gradually going like uh, first the, the mountains, then the animals, then... Yeah, yeah, like an organic matter, yeah. and then like this bacteria or whatever it is, uh, and uh, the birds and other animals, and then it, it comes to this uh, human figure like in the landscape so it, it was meant like this you know that he will find maybe it's a last uh, human or whatever you know someone like in, in the refuge and uh, yeah and then it but I, I wanted it to be um, I didn't want the the person to be very important you know in in the in the whole film I wanted it to be um, uh, at the same level as anything else in the landscape, you know, like for this thing. So it, it didn't, so he didn't get that much um, space proportionally in the film. And I think it's good. <laughs> or that was the main purpose, you know, to to show uh, like this, uh, this natural landscape, uh, not from um, the anthro anthropocentric point of view that we are used to, you know, that we are like the, uh, we influence everything and, and uh, we create our reality and everything serves us, but uh, to be unimportant, you know, or yeah. just like something in, in the landscape for this new type of observer that is maybe, uh, I don't know, like observing some sort of post-human world, you know, mm. when we don't play the main role anymore. Yeah, I understand. I understood that absolutely. I was just thinking before the first, before the first human appeared. I was thinking how this is uh, maybe some other world, some other galaxy, you know. But then, when, <laughs> what? great. When, when humans appear, when human appears, then I'm like, okay, it's Earth. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you were disappointed, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> I was thinking about how the animals, the seals, and the, uh, and the whales are more comfortable than human in this, you know, you know like uh, in in the in the film, like they're, they're really chilling, no? The animals. Yeah, actually, it was very uh, difficult. Is like, <laughs> like a bit, uh, how do you say when he ah uh, uh, is like he. he he could be there, but he, he doesn't need to be there. But the animals are really attached mm -hmm. to the place. It was a problem with shooting the animals, actually, because yeah. we broke every rule we, we were given, obviously. And uh, yeah, because you, you can't uh, approach the animals with the drone. You can't go very close to them. And uh, there are like strict rules uh, in Antarctica. Oh, okay. But <laughs> yeah, there, was, there wasn't any other way to do it, you know, so... <laughs> we should delete this uh, one. Yeah, minute. yeah, if, if at the Polish Antarctic base, if they would see it, like, they, they would be, like, really angry, I think. But, <laughs> but we tried not to, uh, you know, like, the animals, they, they are not used to, to human presence that much there, really. And, and they, so they were, I, I had a uh, feeling that they were more curious than stressed, you know. Mm when we flew around them with, with the drone, they were like, what the fuck is this, you know? No, I, <laughs> no, I, 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 
stressed at all. I was just saying yeah. that they are, they were chilling. They were like more 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 cool than human than human. Yeah. <laughs> but then when human appeared, I was thinking, okay, is this maybe some some metaphor about some mythical like Sisyphus or something because he's there, there on his own, you know, and and he 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 looks like it's a bit pointless existence there, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, all our existence is pointless from some, if, if you look at it from very uh, high, you know, yeah. <laughs> from above. And uh, we are just uh, some species at, at the frozen rock flying through the universe, <laughs> you know, at the speed of, I don't know, 10,000 kilometers uh, per second. So. <laughs> Thank you for the existential crisis now. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, and uh, yes, and I, the name is the name of the the entity right the name of the film or it's not connected in a way like frame is the name of the creature the entity or maybe yeah but i i just wanted to i i wanted some title that that uh, that wouldn't mean anything mm -hmm. uh, you know like anything that you know or just something that would uh, have like a connection uh, or, or you you would think that oh maybe I heard this word but what it is you know mm -hmm. like this feeling that it means something familiar but it actually isn't and uh, I don't know how I invented it I just <laughs> I don't know I just it just ap appeared in my head and then when I put it into Google to see if it uh, actually means something I found out that uh, in uh, um, old English or this old German uh, languages there was some word uh, fremd, which which meant um, alien or strange, really, or something like that. So I was like, great, <laughs> this is like yeah. exactly what I uh, what I need. So I kept the word, and then even later I found out that, that there was some that Raul Amundsen, when he was uh, going to South Pole to mm -hmm. conquer South Pole, um, was going there with the ship that was called Fram. In yeah. uh, in in. Uh, what he was nor nor norwich or i don't know but it in, in this language it it meant norwegian and in this language it meant uh fram meant forward which was also good so so i was like okay this is this is good because it has a lot of connotations that are actually meaningful um in, in terms uh with the topic of the film and uh, so i kept it and those rock and roll songs that are played at the end. <laughs> Why is it there? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it was like because it's picking all sorts of signals, um, like in from the environment. And uh, this was when it was approaching uh, this human. Is something with is connected, you know, with uh, with human beings and its uh, its language, which is uh, which was interesting for for this entity because it was very sophisticated in terms of. Um, in compared to other sounds that it picked from the environment, like natural sounds. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why it was so interested in and playing it uh, again and trying to decompose it and, and make new textures out of it. It was just something that maybe the man was playing from the radio, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there is this connotation with Christmas, which I liked because uh, it could have been Christmas time, you know, and it's, it's the time when uh, like uh, this um, Messiah is born, you know, Jesus Christ, like in all, uh, like in our Christian tradition. So some savior or like someone like the child of God, you know, <laughs> so there is this relation because artificial intelligence is a lot of times um, compared to it's very, uh, simplistic but yeah it's it's uh, that we are the sort of father who is creating you know mm. this uh, new type of uh, entity which is um, in in well, like something like child but but you don't know what what will come out of it you know because we are playing with these uh, artificial neural networks and uh, uh, and we don't know what is really happening inside it anymore you know <laughs> they already use their own uh, mental shortcuts and, and like evolutionary pathways we cease to understand so uh, Are you of that? or it's just uh, I didn't want it to be uh, or I don't like to uh, to have this uh, uh, you know this topic uh, interpretation only 
I think it's, um, but yeah, <laughs> I think it is dangerous, but um, uh, these days we're, we're still very far away from something like, uh, um, it's called yeah, general yeah, artificial yeah. intelligence, you know, or something that will be so auto autonomous and intelligent that it will surpass human intelligence, you know. And so to this time, it's just optimization algorithms and I don't know, very sophisticated algorithms, but nothing that would have some sort of consciousness or whatever. So mm, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it, can, it can help us solve a lot of uh, very complex problems we create. For example, the climate change thing, and I don't know, but uh, yeah, there are there are scientists who uh, warn uh, humanity that it's like the last and, and uh, last invention of of humanity actually that will <laughs> get rid of us uh, at some point, and it's uh, maybe it's uh, true, you know, but <laughs> but we have to get used to this idea, you know, because species come and go, so why would we be so I don't know special? Yeah. But it is scary in a way, but yeah. You mentioned climate change and global warming, and that's one also one of the topics um, I was thinking about while watching this. So you you had it on your mind also, like as one of the one of the ideas behind the film, because there is this uh, uh, radio show when when they are talking about um, record temperatures in where in south mm -hmm. southern USA, right? During yeah. Christmas. And the whole setup of like frozen land. Yeah, it, uh, obviously, I, I, I that that was one of the reasons why I uh, put this uh, story uh, into this landscape, you know, because I, it wasn't only climate change. First, it was like a, a an idea that um, this landscape actually looks like uh, like Earth like millions of years ago, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, even before we appeared on, on the face of the planet, you know, so that, that, that was like the main idea, idea that it's actually good that uh, it's a landscape without us or uh, without our, um, I don't know, impact and, uh, but also at, at the same time, it, it can look like this when we disappear, you know, yeah. or there, there would be this uh, subtropic, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, ecosystem, but yeah. And um, so this was this was actually the first idea. And only when I came there and we started to shoot it, and I realized because when you are there, you really realize uh, very much uh, these issues with with climate change, because it's melting uh, like all, all the ice, and you can see it with your eyes, you know. And uh, when when you listen to the scientists working on the base, they would tell you that uh, a few years ago uh, that it's really warmer, like much warmer than it was. Mm -hmm like uh, um, at, at this specific time when we went there and uh, yeah so so you feel like sort of uh, uh, melancholic when when you are in this situation observing uh, all this disappearing landscape and you realize that maybe <laughs> you had this opportunity to still see icebergs in these mm -hmm. different light conditions and it was really beautiful like everything and you realize that it's going away you know and because maybe because of us, you know, because of our activity. So, uh, yeah, so I decided that it's also like a good uh, point to be in, in the film. So you think they're going to be like in like 50 years, they're going to be, if we exist, if we existed, there, there are going to be some cities on, on, on the continent? Mm, I don't know if cities, but... Uh, mm, Towns, villages. I mean, if it's going to be warmer and warmer at one point, yeah, it's yeah. going to be habitable for humans. Yeah, you 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 could uh, produce their corn or I don't know <laughs> wheat or something, <laughs> you know, because yeah, our, where we live now would be inhabitable, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, so you would go more to the poles, you know, it it would shift all all this. Uh, it's happening now, actually. It's not that far away, maybe. It's, it's more dry and with these wild uh, natural disasters going on, you know, floods and orcans. And I don't know, we, we even had it in here in Slovakia uh, last year, so like some of disasters of this type. And when you talk to older people, like your grandparents or I don't know, they don't remember, you know, mm -hmm. events like this. 
in their line lifetime so often uh, as as now. So. So there are these small holes, deep holes in the ice. Yeah. And th these these are man-made. And what wh what's the point of them? I kind of miss that. <laughs> Yeah, we were, um, well, it was just uh, one thing that, that, that the person uh, in there could do. Uh, the, the character in, in, the, in the refuge. But the, the idea was that he was a sort of a scientist that was making these holes like inside the eyes to... Um, uh, you do these holes for several purposes, also for uh, find out uh, what is like... Uh, because of the climate change, how, how fast the, the icebergs are, are melting. Mm -hmm. You know, you take these samples of, uh, you, you dig oh, deep down, sure. and then yeah, you can, you can tell. Good. Yeah, then you can tell. But you can also find maybe some bacteria inside, you know, hidden uh, in the eyes. And so it has different purposes. And, uh, but that's what they do there, you know, in, in Antarctica. Some of the scientists which, uh, which have this... Uh, which are in this field of uh, science. I think we, we covered a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of topics for this very, very interesting and unique film. Um, and maybe if you have something to add, not about the film necessarily, but... I don't know. I, <laughs> it was just that it was really <laughs> absurd, actually, experience. Uh, uh, shooting this film, this sort of very sophisticated science fiction uh, sort of documentary in the conditions that we actually uh, were in because we, uh, the three of us stayed in this refuge you see in, in, in the picture in this small uh, metal uh, ship container hmm. which was like... Uh, Inside. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh. father, and it was like really, really very survival trip, you know, like because we, <laughs> like it, it looks so uh, sophisticated, but we actually were dealing with problems like because there was no heating inside. We we only had like a small electric, uh, I don't know, heating uh, body. Uh, we, um, but we could make electricity for like three hours a day. So we had to choose whether we will uh, charge batteries for the drone or, <laughs> or like melt uh, water uh, to drink or cook. And, you know, it was like very uh, mold uh, and wet inside the container. So, <laughs> so in these conditions to shoot this type of film was like really <laughs> absurd. And, and the weather was really bad a lot of times. So we couldn't <clears throat> even go outside of the container because there were orc and winds and the drone was unable to fly in these conditions. Uh, and we were unable to go out in these conditions. So it was like very extreme actually. So I'm glad that uh, it, it went well because at, at some point they thought like we, we, we weren't able to manage uh, to shoot it. Not even in in like uh, six weeks, you know, because sometimes it, it we won't we, we weren't all the time in the container. We were at the Polish base, and they took us there, <clears throat> but it uh, to shoot. But it wasn't very easy because we, yeah, it's very hard to explain. But there was a lot of ice in the water, so we couldn't approach the shore a lot of times. When when there was a lot of wind, it wasn't possible to get in, into the rubber boats. Uh, these zodiacs to transport us uh, to the container because it, it wasn't at the same, it was across the bay from the Polish Antarctic station. So we, we only had like a radio and, and we could, uh, there was our only contact with, uh, with the Polish Antarctic base when we needed something. But when we needed something, it, it could took like several days uh, until they could reach us, you know? And <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and uh, also that maybe there is one other thing that I, that I can say. Uh, while I was I was there and we were shooting this movie, it was so uh, absurd and such a strong experience for me that I I um, I made like my own video diary sort of mm, from my experience. And it turns out that <laughs> maybe there will be another film uh, which I'm finishing right now editing. Um, which is like uh, uh, my own, like a human or personal uh, view from the situation, from like the point of view of, of a human being, you know, at, at the situation. So it will be sort of complementary to frame. 
let's say, but from uh, my point of view. <laughs> the name of the film is Vera, no? <laughs> no, the name of the film is uh, right now White on White, it's called. <laughs> okay. Wow. And I can't wait to see that. It's, it's going to be <laughs> also or short? Oh, well, maybe, no, not, now it's like uh, maybe 62 minutes, mm. uh, but I will see. Like, uh, so it's going to be quite long, <laughs> actually the same length, a feature mm. film maybe, so. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see that. That's going to be amazing, I guess. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's more from the, from the station, you know, with the, at this Polygon Antarctic station. So you see the people there and how it looks like. So yeah, but it will be a nice comparison to this one. It's like um, interesting, very interesting. Yeah, because it, because I felt at some point it was very hard for me. I felt at some point that uh, because this totally detached, unhuman, you know, uh, point of view, but you felt so extreme uh, emotions and everything in there, mm -hmm. and I just needed to somehow, uh, you know, verbalize it and and like uh, uh, put it into the film and. And uh, at, at some point, it was this uh, diary of this man, you know, sort of, but it wasn't uh, compatible. It, it, it wasn't good, you know, to be in, in one movie. So that's why maybe it happened that I had this urge to, to make another film from uh, like a human point of view. So. Great. I hope we'll have you as a guest with that film <laughs> in the upcoming years. Yeah, if the world doesn't <laughs> yeah, yeah. disappear. <laughs> oh, they will, they will. I, I really hope they will. <laughs> so thank you so much for this great talk. And, uh, yes. Yeah, it was, it was my pleasure too. It's, it's, uh, I'm sorry I, I can't be with you in, in Belgrade. But maybe with uh, the next one, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, yes, so take care and stay safe and hope to see you yeah. soon, somewhere. Yeah, thank you very much for the interview and uh, maybe see you sometime in the future, bright and shiny future that awaits us. <laughs> so, uh, goodbye. <laughs>